unfortunately I've mentioned it before in some of my other videos that I suffered quite badly last year with wire worm they're still here this year I've had a, a bit more of a research and they can be a problem apparently for up to five years um, so I, I'm really beside myself a little bit because so I've got some elephant garlic here there's only about three of them that are actually doing any good I had some other garlic um, early white I think it was called just just down the middle here all gone I, I wonder why they weren't doing any good I pulled one up just wire them completely all through them chewed them all to pieces up there I had some uh, winter onion sets 50 of them there's about six all the rest just eat, eat them completely um, you know it's a it's a real bug bear. I don't know quite what to do there's not any chemicals and I don't really want to use chemicals anyway um, so what I'm going to try is um, putting like a sacrificial tuber in the ground so I've got some old potatoes just just a few that were left in a, in a sack I'm just going to pop sort of three or four in a bed it's, they seem to be worse this end that the first sort of ten beds I'm just going to put a little marker um, stick so I know where they are and apparently if you if you put a potato or I think you can use a carrot or a parsnip anything like that just under the surface then they will kind of navigate to that and then you can every two or three days pick them out and just pinch and, and kill the wire worms so we're going to give this a go obviously it's a, an organic method not using chemicals or anything um, a bit lump, bit more labor intensive maybe but it doesn't really matter um, we're just going to give it a go see if it works because these wire worms are absolutely doing my head in um, I did put some nematodes down I've just got some the nematodes that are the broad spectrum they, they do sort of everything um, all the different things you, you get specific ones or you get one that's just for fruit and veg so I, I bought that one hoping that that might do something it didn't touch them, hasn't touched them at all. So I'm just going to, I'll say, I'll pop three in here. So I'll just put that just down below the surface. So I'll put some perpetual spinach in here, just so put a marker so I know where that is. Um, there's some perpetual spinach in here. I don't know. I think they, they tend to navigate for anything that is more bulbous, just from, from what I've found here. The garlic, the onions. Uh, last year they hit my carrots and their parsnips over there. Um, I've, I've planted out my brassicas and my sprouts. Some of the leaves have gone a little bit yellow, but I don't think that's because anything's attacking them underground. I had a few busy days and I left them in a cloche with the end sealed and it got to 46 degrees in there. So I think they got a bit scorched. I don't know if they're going to come back and I've just today planted a few more um, seeds in some little rows just over there in the new raised beds just as spares in case they got a bit too scorched and they don't come back but um so they seem to go for the tuber tuber sort of bed more than the um the the roots of um the brassicas it, it seems but um we'll give it a go with, with these potatoes these are what i've got handy just they've just potatoes that have gone a bit soft so rather than chuck them on a compost heap I thought I'd just give this a go and we'll see how we do. I'll come back in a few days and we'll see if there's anything in them. And if it works, then I shall just um, have to keep doing it until the numbers decrease to a, to a level that I'm happy. Will you be quiet? Um, till they decrease to the sort of levels I'm happy with. I don't mind losing a little bit of stuff, but they are just hammering everything. I mean, literally almost stripping this entire bed of garlic and um like i say i lost almost all all 50 onions so it's just it's just a bit of a nightmare um and hopefully this will work i'll come back in a few days and fingers crossed hopefully we'll um have something to to kill so today i'm just checking the potatoes that i put in to try and um Get some wire worm. Oh, one just fell out. Hold on. Let me get that one. Just have a quick look in there. 
Uh, so it has been working. Oh, look at them! Look. One, two, three. Four, one in there. Couple that fell out in the bucket. Let's see if you can see that. So it has been working. I've been getting anywhere between sort of two, two and six or eight maybe per potato. So I think it's going to be a slow, slow ongoing thing. Um, I've just got one in this bed, three in this bed, and a couple more down here. So it does work. I'll just see if I can get pull one out. They tend to just pull out fairly easily. Come on camera. And that is the problem. That little dude right there. That's the cause of all my issues here. They've been eating my garlic, my onions. Um, these brassicas, I've got two beds of brassicas here. These got scorched in the cloche. I had a minus two one night and a plus 46 in the cloche the next day. And they they just knocked them for six, so I've re-sown some more. So I'm going to take these out and replant. I don't think the wire worms necessarily go for the brassica roots and they haven't seemed to have touched this i've got perpetual spinach in there they don't seem to be doing anything to that that's coming on okay um but anything with roots so the garlic you can see that's elephant garlic there i've only got one that one at the back that is looking any good and they were right down to about here they, so all of those are pretty much knackered um, I've lost a few onions down there in beds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, bed ten. That's about as far as they go. Um, I'm just about to put some main crop potatoes in over in these beds at the end of the fruit here. Um, they don't seem to be down there, so I'm hoping that the potatoes will do okay. But yeah, if you're suffering with wire worms, unfortunately there isn't really anything on the market that you can get chemical wise and i don't particularly like using chemicals anyway so give this a try just any old sort of soft potatoes or cheap bag of potatoes from the supermarket pop two or three in every bed keep pulling them keep pulling them out and just just get them out and just just squish them um it's the only way to do it really but a uh, bit of a pain but hopefully it'll sort itself out over the next couple of years I've just pulled up one of my red onions because they don't seem to be doing very well and look at that that three wire worms right in the base of it they're all like it all of them so that's two beds of onions I, I planted winter onion sets and that is the only one that survived there and I put all these red onion sets in a few weeks ago and I just thought they're, not, they're really not doing very well I didn't think that the wire worm were this far down. Look at them. Just squish them. Little sods, they're just ruining everything. Absolutely ruining it. I've got kales, and I reckon they're even getting into these kales now. I didn't think they were. And I've had a few die. Well, I've just found out why my two beds of brassicas are failing. Look at that. The roots are just full of wire worm. I wasn't sure if they hit brassicas or not. But I just decided to pull them up because they're just not doing anything. Look at that, just riddled. Oh dear, absolute nightmare. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Bloody things. Right, right, right into where the roots, that's the main sort of crown of the roots there my thumb is just riddled just nothing stands a chance i really don't know what to do like that so i'll just carry it on and show you i've just pulled a couple more out and they're just all the same so these brassicas have been here 
planted them out at least three weeks ago and they've just sat there. They haven't grown at all. We've got ants as well. Ants and wireworm. Look at all those ants in there. Not so many wireworm in this one. At least in one. So I'll look at this little one. There's a wireworm there. I don't know if the ants cause much of a problem, although they do seem to be burying right into the roots a lot of my stuff. I have to get some ant nematodes. <clears throat> Look at that one. Look at all those wire worm. Oh, it's got to be. <laughs> Look at all them in, right inside, right in the root plate. There. There's got to be a dozen in there. Yeah, just an absolute nightmare. Let's look at this one. There's one, two, Three, four, oh, that, oh god, four, five, and it's loads of that again. So, I think you've seen enough now of the damage I'm getting from these bloody wire worms. Um, it's actually, it's, it's a massive problem. It, I would, I can't understate it, it's a huge problem. Um, it's really affecting what I'm doing here. I've lost two beds of onion sets. I, I planted a whole load of onion sets, winter onion sets. Every one bar one of those has gone. Um, I replaced them with red onion sets and there's not one that's doing okay. I've lifted some and they're just smothered in wireworm, two or three burrowed right, right into the sets of every one. Um, I've also got a problem with meadow ants, um, which I, I didn't think was going to be a bit of a, a problem. I, I had a bit of a search and, and most people say ants are fine in a veg garden, they kind of aerate the soil a bit, it's not a problem. Well, certain things I've had, so I've planted some main crop potatoes and some of my charlottes that I did in, in the potato video in the beds down the bottom there. About half the bed hasn't come up. And I thought, well, I'll have a look just in case it's wireworm, because I know there's a small amount of wireworm down there, but nothing like what is up in these first 10 or 15 beds here. So I've lifted some of the tubers and they're just smothered, like two, 300 ants all around them. I can't see any visible sort of signs of eating into the potato or anything, but they're smothering them. It's literally just smothered in ants when I pull them out. So they're obviously doing something which is, is making things not grow. Um, although it's hard to find anything on, online that, that specifically says what they do, whether, whether they eat the, the tubers or, or what, but they're obviously doing something. So my problem here is twofold. Um, but I've also, I've lost two beds of sprouts, all my sprouts, my brassicas, um, bed of kale, bed and a half of kale. Um, they don't seem to be touching the chard and the perennial um, spinach. Um, or my beetroots, which I put in these new beds, and I've got some of my um, uh, purple sprouting that survived the scorch, that I accidentally scorched them in the cloche. I'm having a lot of problems, aren't I? Um, so these seem to be doing okay in here, but I have made a decision that for the next year, I'm gonna have to spray things. I, I wanted to do everything organic, but I'm just not gonna get a crop. I'm not gonna get anything. Almost everything is, is being eaten. It's just an absolute nightmare. So what I've decided to do is just to use some spray um, just when I'm planting things out for the first couple of weeks when they're small and they're vulnerable just to try and give them a chance, just to try and let them get going. 
um, and then I'll assess the situation sort of this time next year, um, see if the levels have dropped, because if anything, it seems worse this year than last year. I, I reckon there might have been some eggs laying in the ground that have all hatched, and this year, hopefully this year it's peaking, and it will start to tail off next year, especially if I can spray a few things and get some of them killed. Um, but yeah, it's just been an absolute nightmare. And I hate spraying things. The whole point of this for me was, was to be as organic as possible. It's all for myself. I'm not selling anything, so it doesn't really matter. But it's just annoying. It's just really annoying. So what I'm going to do now, I've, I've already sprayed these. I gave these a, a really good douse just with a, a basic bug killer that, that does caterpillars. This is one I, I found a couple of people online had said with, with uh, why we're in problems, that if you get a, a systemic spray, that lasts a couple of weeks and it kills caterpillars, it should kill wireworm. So this is what I'm going to try. So these are my onions that I've grown from seed. First couple of trays, I've got a couple more trays over there, um, which are a bit smaller. And I'm just going to pop these in these raised beds because there doesn't seem to be so much of a problem here. And like I say, I've already given them a good douse with the spray yesterday. So I'm just going to pop these in here and, and hope that they do okay. Otherwise I'm going to end up with no onions at all. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a bit of a nightmare and it's going to be an ongoing battle for sure. I've had to re-sow all my brassicas. Well, uh, I've got one bed of broccoli that seems to be doing okay, um, which I haven't sprayed or anything. It's just a bit strange. There doesn't seem to be any any problems with those. Um, but I've had to re-sow all my sprouts a little bit later than I normally would. Um, so certain things are going to be behind, but it just is what it is. I've got to do what I've got to do. It's, it's you know, it's been a bit of, bit of a nightmare, but... Um, I'll, I'll try and catch up as best I can. So yeah, I mean, if anyone's got any ideas on why worm, if anyone's had the same problems and you, you've figured out a solution, I'm still doing the potato thing, keeping those in the beds and just, just squishing the little blighters whenever I can. But that's just, that's very slow, so it's quite time consuming. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that just using these sprays is, is gonna sort the problem out. But like I say, any ideas from anyone, please leave a, a, a note in the comments section on, on what you found works because I, this is just an absolute nightmare for me. It's really, really hammered me. And uh, I'll, I'll try anything, to be honest, to get on top of it. But uh, anyway, take it easy, guys, and happy growing. And I, I do hope you're not suffering like I am. But uh, yeah, take it easy, and we'll see you next time, guys.